Good Biblical Morning. Yeah, welcome back to a little thing we call Bible. Read along, Bible. Read along. Okay, you know the song. Um, I got my Canadian mug here. Canadian maple tea. And I am literally drinking maple apple cider sweetened with maple sugar. Maple syrup. It's tasty, right? Oh, yeah. It's delicious. It <laughs> tastes like Canada in a cup. So those of you that are not from Canada, you don't even know. You don't understand what's happening right now with maple on top of maple on top of maple. The only thing that it is missing is some maple bacon up in there. But... Um, <laughs> Little candied maple bacon on the side, covered in chocolate. That's what I'm talking about. Um, welcome to Bible Read Along. <laughs> if you've never been here before, I'm a little weird, but I love Jesus and I love the Bible. And today we're reading this way, Joshua chapter 11. And I'm here with my wonderful wife, Ashley. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. And she is all jacked up on Mountain <laughs> Dew, apparently. She didn't have a Mountain Dew. She has, like, pre-workout and stuff. No, you didn't even this no, morning. Fasting, sorry. She just high on life this morning. <laughs> um, but welcome back. We take one chapter of scripture. We read through it, try to discover the context. And then how does this also apply to our lives? Um, we love you guys. I hope I hope you love us. I mean, the three of you are four. Oh, we're up to eight now. You know, the eight of you that are here <laughs> regularly. Um, thank you. We feel the love. Thanks for keep coming back and, and being a part of the Bible Read Along family. If you're enjoying what we're doing, share it out. Um, sometimes I have a feeling, you know, like artists are never... They put their heart and soul into something, and then they die and become famous. That's kind of how I feel with Bible read-along yeah, no, sometimes. It's, it's so great. Your work is so great. But do you think anybody wants any of it? No. 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 Oh, you're doing a great job. I've had a lot of people like... Am I, though? <laughs> I've had a lot of friends even message me. I'll invite people to the group, and it's like, oh, thanks. I just... I don't think it's for me, and I'm kind of like, what? Is, what is it? Like reading the Bible isn't for you? All right, that's fine. Um, but uh, it's it's just I'm so glad those of you that are here, and one day when I'm when in many years in the future when I'm gone, I believe there will be a revival of Bible read along, and everyone will be watching it and tuning in, and at least that's my my fantasy. Don't wake me up. All right. Um, we got a bunch of our family here, Forever Family, our Bible Read Along family. <clears throat> In the chat, let's say hello. Hello. Um, we have Mercury, aka Trish, is here from Stratford, Connecticut. Phyllis is here from Ohio. We are so glad you're here. Carolyn from Salmon Arm, British Columbia. We have Mercury. Cool music today. Is it new? What is it? Thank you, Mercury. Um, I have played, since we've started Joshua, you may have not have noticed, I've played some new music. Today's song was called, uh, is it going to tell me what this is? No. Um, everything is from the website. Let me open this notes here. Uh, www.purple-planet.com purple-planet.com why do i use that website because it's royalty free music meaning i can just download it play it and i don't have to pay anyone i don't have to worry about being copyright any of that so that's where it is from and it is called phoenix rising i believe is the name of that tune today and yes we've been playing some new music let's see if i can find it here just the actual name of it sorry I got the music ready. Phoenix Rising is what that was called. Let's take a listen right now, just for Mercury. We're, I'm playing radio DJ now. Let's take a listen to Phoenix Rising from Purple Planet. You can dance along at home. Are you dancing? Okay, so yeah, that's the song. That's the song. All right, we'll stop it there. We'll stop it there. Um, that's the song, Phoenix Rising. Um, thanks for noticing, Mercury. Appreciate that. Ashley's in the chat as well. Rachel here from Watascoin, Alberta. 
Um, Valentina in California, welcome. Mindy from just down the street, Red Deer, Alberta. So glad you are here. Mary, good morning, Mary Israel. I, I don't know, have you told us yet where you're from? Did I miss it yesterday? Welcome back, Mary Israel. We'd love to know where you're from. Let us know. Um, so that's our chat right now. If you are new or you've been here a while, hit that chat. Hit it up with any questions you have, comments, whether it's about the music, whether it's about the Bible, whether it's questions you have, let us know. We love connecting with you in the chat. Any questions at all? Any questions at all? Any. Any. I just gave Ashley free reign on the type of questions she might be asking. So um, we're missing Matthew this morning. He must be sleeping in today for a change. All right, let's pray and get to the word of God today. So Lord, thank you so much for a new day. It is a good day for a good day. And so Lord, we just set our hearts and minds on you. We say, fill us with your life, fill us with your spirit, change us by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, we got... Um, Dun, dun, dun. Joshua chapter 11, Moses is dead, Joshua's in charge, they've Everybody's crossed over dead. the Jordan, everyone is dead basically, um, they've crossed over the Jordan, they circled around Jericho, they took that city, they took Ai, they took a bunch of the other cities, um, and that's what we know, we know that Joshua and his machine warriors, um, they are just amazing warriors, but what's the, the secret? The secret sauce is God's with them. And so God is with them. We've even seen, um, we've seen, there's Matthew. We've seen hail. They've been fighting and hail comes and kills the enemies. We've seen God just doing amazing things in this. So they're, they're on a rampage. They're just taking over the region that God had told them to take over. Um, let's dive in. Yesterday was a longer chapter. Today's a little bit shorter so I can slow it down. We can have a little more fun. Um, we had a great night last night at Celebrate Recovery. Uh, we watched Rick Warren, Pastor Rick Warren from Saddleback Church in California about um, the seven reasons he believes in Celebrate Recovery. And it is available on our recovery page. If you are interested, um, we'll put that in the comments as well if you want to check that out or see what we're doing. And starting next week, we actually will be going live on Zoom. So if you are interested in joining us on Zoom, uh, we've been trying to work out the bugs. They are still there. So we are trying to get video and sound to sound good, but I think we have it figured out. And so next week we will be on Zoom for Celebrate Recovery if you would like to join us. But if you wanna go to that Facebook page, I just put in the Facebook chat. Um, the Rick Warren video is available. You can go and watch that and see. It's only about 16 minutes, Even 17 minutes. Even if you're not in the recovery community, it's a really good video. Even if you are not in recovery, Ashley said it's a good video because it just explains why. Why we believe in it, what it is a bit, and, and maybe a great tool for you to share with others. So I know that this isn't recovery time, but it's important. That's a part of our lives. So good. All right, let's go to the Word of God. If you're ready, if thank you, babe, for making me a tea this morning. If you are ready, don't be sorry. If you are ready, what are you waiting for? Hit that thumbs up. Hit that heart. Let us know that you're ready. Let's go to the scripture. Or you could even type in the comments, I'm ready. These are my typing fingers. Yeah, hit some angry faces. Like, oh, I'm not ready. Oh, it even shakes its head at you. It's like, uh, okay, let's get into Joshua chapter 11. Was there hearts and stuff? I can't ever see. I say it's not I, there yet because I'm way ahead of everyone. Oh, so I tell you guys to put faces. hearts and stuff, but I can't actually see them. Just so you know, I'm just trusting that you're doing it. That's how much I believe in you guys. Okay, Joshua chapter 11. Here we go. The northern kings defeated an epic tale of Joshua and his mighty men killing everyone okay northern kings defeated when jabin i like that name i know a guy named jabin when jabin king of hazar heard of this he sent word to jobab king of madon to the kings of shimron and Akshaf, 
that's probably not at all how you pronounce that in Hebrew, but Akshaf, and to the northern kings who were in the mountains, in the Areba south of Kinnereth, in the western foothills, and the Napoth door on the west. <sighs> some of you guys, I'm sure some of you come to Bible Read Along just to hear me screw up Bible names. So, thanks for being here, Glenn. <laughs> That's why Ashley comes every morning, she says. Um, I'm probably killing this, but we already know that Joshua took over one region. This is now describing the kings of another region that he's about to take over. To the Canaanites in the east and the west and the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the mosquito bites in the hill country and the Hivites below Hermon in the region of Mizpah. They came out with all their troops and a large number of horses and chariots. A huge army. This is huge. Huge army. Um, nev You've never seen an army this big. It's the biggest army. I tell you. Okay. A huge army. As numerous as the sands of the seashore. Can you picture this? Word of Joshua is spreading. They are scared. Um, they're worried. So they are joining together even stronger now. Horses, chariots, an army that when you look out over it, over the land, it, they look as many people as you would see as sand on a beach. That's what they are seeing. Like All they're seeing is this flow of human soldiers and horses and so this is this is an intimidation tactic to try and um to try and de-escalate israel from from their rampage right now um they came out with all their troops a large number of horses and chariots a huge army as numerous as the sands of the seashore all these kings joined forces and made camp together at the waters of Miram to fight against Israel. So what I'm hearing here is like, really, Israel's doing a great job at just uniting the land. They're all coming together, working together to be killed. Um, let's keep going. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. Because by this time tomorrow, I will hand all of them slain over to Israel. You are a hamstring their horses and burn. You are to hamstring their horses and burn their chariots. Sorry. Um, so what is this saying? Well, number one, I love this because God comes out again with the same message. Do not be afraid. Don't be. And to me, this just let's talk recovery for a minute here, because sometimes we deal with an issue and we feel, I know Ashley has expressed this, and I, I hope I have freedom to share this, but you know, you deal with an issue and sometimes you feel like, man, I've been in recovery, I've done step studies, how come I'm still dealing with the same issue? Good news, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's fear, maybe it's your self-worth, whatever it might be. Um, all of the things. Um, Joshua's dealing with the same thing. To the point where God has to continually remind him and say, well, yeah, but yeah, you've won some victories and you, but he still deals with this. I'm afraid somehow. Um, and God says, don't be afraid. Be of good courage. Be, you know, be strong and courageous. This message that has been all throughout the book of Wiven, woven throughout Wiven, <laughs> woven throughout the book of Joshua. It's like a thread just pulling through there. And to me, this speaks number one to Joshua, the humanity of Joshua. That even when you have a high, you win a, big, a victory, you've taken the land God's told you, you've entered the promise of what God has. You may still be dealing with fear, anxiety, depression, these kind of things that God has to continually remind you. Don't be afraid. Hey, Joshua, I know you have a tendency to see this army as big as the seas, sand, the sand on the sea and the, the horses and that don't be afraid. Don't let your circumstances dictate who you are. Don't let what's going on around you dictate your, your faith and your hope in the Lord and the promise of what he's done. Um, I heard a quote this week about, you know, ships don't sink because of the water around them. 
They sink because of the water that gets in them. And it said, don't let what's going on around you, the storms of life, get into you because that's when you sink. And this is what God is saying to Joshua as well. What is in you, Joshua? Don't let the fear that's all around you get into your life. Don't let the 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 thinking lower of yourself that's all around you get into your life. Don't play that game. Israel has played this game, and they will in the future, actually, because um, I think of David and Goliath, right? And David's there. Goliath is yelling at the Israel army, you you this and that, and he's cursing them. And, and they, it said that they are actually, their hearts sank within them, and they became afraid until David showed up and says, why is everyone afraid? Why is no one fighting? Let's go. Let's do what God has called us to do. Don't let the world around you, don't let the economy around you dictate what God has for you. If God's saying you should start a business and, you know, I put this in your heart and don't look around and go, it's the terrible time. It's the wrong time. It's no, it's God's time. You do what God says when he says it, because he can do it. He can do it in the most, you know, you don't look around at your family and go, everyone's fighting and this and that. I was dealing with some stuff with my sisters yesterday, fighting and arguing and, um, you know, and I can go, oh, our family, uh, or I can go, no, this is not what's going on around me doesn't have to get in me. I'm preaching a little bit here, but that's what I see in this verse six. The Lord said to Joshua, don't be afraid of them reminder it's okay joshua you're still on a journey you're not there yet i'm going to keep telling you i'm going to keep encouraging you until you believe it because by this time tomorrow i will hand them all over slain to you and you're to hamstring so that's actually those that don't know what that means um the muscles and tendons on the back of your leg when you cut that like an achilles heel, like an achilles heel. if you cut that it releases the tendons because tendons are tight um, I know from my own hand, even some of the surgery that they've had to do, you know, tendons are tight and they're pulled tight and they're made. And when you cut it, it coils up inside of itself and then you, you lose movement, you lose control, you lose, you bleed, out. you bleed out. And that is what is happening with the horses. So they're saying, take the back of the horse legs, cut them, no animal, no human, nothing that comes against you is to stay alive. How are the animals against them? Well... They're not intentionally, but they're tools of the enemy. No, and that's a great way to word it, actually. No tools of the enemy will succeed against you. It's not about the horses. It's about tools of the enemy. Okay, 7, verse 7, Joshua. So Joshua and his whole army came against them suddenly at the waters of Miram and attacked them. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Israel. They defeated them and pursued them all the way to greater Sidon, to Misrothoth, Misrothoth, Mame, and to the valley of Mizpah and to the east. Ashley's shaking her head at me. Um, <laughs> until, <laughs> this is why I was a good Sunday school teacher. Rachel will attest to that, but not necessarily, you know, because I just make up words and stuff. But anyways, um, to the valley of Mizpah, to the east, until no survivors were left. Joshua did to them as the Lord directed. This is a huge line right here. Because this isn't just, well, God told me to do it this way before. Well, I want to do it this way. Everything Joshua is doing is ordered of the Lord. It's not his own desire. He's not sadistic to go out and do all this. He's just doing what he's told to do. He hamstrung their horses. He burned their chariots. No, no tools of the wet, of the enemy will prosper against you. At that time, Joshua turned back and captured Hazar and put its king to the sword. Hazar had been the head of all of these kingdoms. Everyone in it, they put to the sword. They totally destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed. And he burned Hazar itself. Joshua took all these royal cities and their kings and put them to sword. He totally destroyed them, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. Yet Israel did not burn any of the cities built on their mounds except Hazar, which Joshua burned. The Israelites carried off for themselves all the plunder and livestock of these cities, but all the people they put to the sword until they completely destroyed them not sparing anyone that breathed. 
as the Lord commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did it. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. Now, this is, excuse me, this is a very interesting little breakdown here, too. This is a system that I love. And you, those that have followed for a while know I like systems in the Bible. I like to see them. God told Moses. Moses told Joshua. Joshua obeyed. Sometimes, and I know some of you in the chat have even said this, I struggle with hearing God. How do I know if I'm hearing God? Well, do you have someone in your life that you follow? Because maybe they're hearing from God. And I'm not saying we need priests and secondhand hearing from God. Only certain people can hear from God. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying sometimes God puts people in our lives that he has spoken to. And as we come under submit, submission, come under the mission of what God has done. This is not an abusive word. It's not a, it's not a um, power hungry word. We willingly submit. We come under the mission, submission. So we come under the mission and we say, I will follow you as you follow God. I will follow you. I will follow you. you. Ashley's singing to me. It's awesome. Okay. Um, I embarrassed her now. <laughs> um, but we, this is, this is it. And so sometimes we, we stress out going, well, what's God saying? What's God saying? Maybe it's not, what is God saying? It's actually who has God placed in your life that you need to come under the mission of. It's not, what is God saying? It's who is God showing you? And so sometimes we're asking the wrong question. So sometimes it's just going, okay, I'll come under this. And we obey them as they obey the Lord. This is how Paul taught his disciples. Follow me as I follow Jesus. Now, did he want to teach people to follow Jesus directly? Yes. But he, he knew that the way they could do that is just by mimicking what he had done, following him, teaching like he had taught. Um, and that's, you know, this is discipleship. This is mentorship. This is sponsor. This is accountability. That's what this is. This is all through the Bible, these systems and structures. That one's free. Let's keep going. We're at the end here. Joshua took his entire land. He took this entire land, the hill country, all the, um, yep, that word. Negev. Negev. Negev, the whole region of, I, I just can't say weird words normally, I'm sorry, all of the Negev, and the region of Goshen, the western foothills, the Arabah, and the mountains of Israel with their foothills. This is, have you ever listened to other Bible reading along programs? By the way, that's how they read. Um, from Mount Halak, which rises towards Seir, to Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, below Mount Hermon. He captured all the kingdoms and put them to death. He captured all the kingdoms and put them to death. Joshua waged war against all of these kings for a long time. That's another key phrase. This is a recovery phrase. It's a journey, not a destination. It's going to take time. Sometimes fighting our battles takes time and it takes community, the right people around us, okay? Um, except for the Hivites living in Gibeon, not one city made a treaty of peace with the Israelites who took them all in battle. And Gibeon made, only made a treaty because they tricked them into making a treaty with them. So in other words, the only no one was able to escape this. And I like that because sometimes, again, this talks about when we're entering the promises of God, what has God called you to? When you're entering the promises of God, nothing of the enemy is to be left behind. Nothing. And even when we read, you know, Everything that was breathing was killed. <laughs> Why? Because your enemy shouldn't even have a breath left after you've entered into the promises of what God's called you to do. Um, okay, where are we? We took them into battle um, for, nope. nope. We're on 20, I think. For it is the Lord himself who hardened their hearts to wage war against Israel. It is the Lord himself who hardened their hearts to wage war against Israel. Why? So that he might destroy them totally, exterminating them without mercy as the Lord had commanded mercy, had commanded Moses rather. Um, 
this is interesting. And again, this doesn't mean that God is a merciless God. God is not, he desires all to know him. And now, thankfully, because of Jesus, there is a doorway that all can know him. Um, however, this was, again, this was an example to Israel. And this was an example to the world at that time that when God says something, it is to be obeyed fully, completely, and that God fulfills his promises. So um, it's interesting to look at this and we can get a tainted vision of, we've said this before, we can get a tainted vision of who God is. If, if, I, if you heard me yelling at my kids, you'd go, man, he's just angry all the time. But you heard me yelling one time. You don't see the other side of me with them and hugging and cuddling and telling them and encouraging them. And, you know, you don't see those things maybe. And so same with God. We can look at this one isolated event and go, well, that's the character of God. He's mean. He hates everyone. I knew it. He's just in heaven with his finger going, I'm going to get you. And he's just waiting for us to screw up. And not at all. That's one situation with God. It's not the full picture. So we need all of scripture to see the full picture of God. At that time, Joshua went and destroyed the Anakites from the hill country from Hebron to Beer and Anab and from the hill country of Judah and from the hill country of Israel. Joshua totally destroyed them and their towns. No Anakites were left in Israel territory. Anakites, by the way, was also um, there was giants in Anakites. That was part of their lineage. So just so you know, like they're fighting giants and stuff and too. That's where Anakin Skywalker. And Anakin Skywalker is from them too. Absolutely. So we're left in Israel territory only in Gaza. Um Gath Ashdod did any survive. Final verses here. So Joshua took the entire land. Just as the Lord had directed Moses and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions, then the land had rest from war. Interest, and this is really now, see, we can see the anger of God, but this is the heart of God, that there is a place of peace and rest and God's comfort. And But sometimes you don't get to peace without a battle. Sometimes peace comes, well, I just want peace. I want serenity. God grant me the serenity. And we just think it's this magic wand of peace that now overcomes us. Sometimes I had a pastor that used to always say, peace comes at the end of a sword sometimes. Because sometimes you got to fight for it. You got to fight those hurts, habits, hangups. You got to fight the enemy. You got to fight for your land. You got to fight. And then peace can come. That's Joshua chapter 11. What do you think? Any comments, questions? Let me know. Let's head over to the chat for a minute. I think there's a few comments there. Let's do it. Mindy, when I was preaching, that's so good about not letting what's going on around you affect your inner being. When we stay focused on God, we get such peace. It's so true. Uh, one of the devotions I've been reading this week is about beating anxiety. And um, that is exactly what it talked about. You know, that when we're aware God is with us, and not only is God with us, his spirit lives inside of us. We have to function from a peace, a place of peace and gentleness. Now, again, that, you know, yeah, it gets into more, but you're you're so right. So what are you allowing in you? Because what's in you actually can impact what's going on around you. Or too many of us allow what's going on around us to impact what's going on inside of us. Jo Matthew says, why was Joshua afraid? That's a great question. And I don't fully know. I just know, all I know is that throughout the book of Joshua, we keep seeing this message from God that says, don't be afraid be of courage, that God is speaking to this area in Joshua's life and saying, I see this. You don't have to be ashamed of it. You don't have to be to, to hide it. I see this part of you and I'm going to keep speaking life because there's a call for you to do what I've called you to do. Great question, Matthew. Uh, was Hazar a good man or a bad man? Um, he dead, so he's bad, according to Joshua. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck actually like chucked wood well a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood oh. now you know so now now you know 
you're welcome. Didn't that just open the doors of heaven? Um, <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> I know any question. That's what I said. Were the hives good people or bad people in the Bible, Dan? Um, the Hittites, Amorites, mosquito bites, all of that. Um, no, at this time, all we know, Matthew, is based on, and again, I'm going based on the context of what we're reading, not other things. So based on what we're reading, they are enemies of God. They are trying to attack and hold God's people back from the promise. And God has said, no, nothing will stand in the way of my promise. Um, Mercury, isn't that the truth? The battle first, then the peace, hopefully. And that's not always the case. But there are some things that don't, peace doesn't come without battle. It doesn't come without fighting the war. It doesn't, and that's okay. We ha Sometimes we have this illusion of peace that is not realistic. Real peace, lasting peace, fulfilling peace often comes at the end of a battle. And again, it comes from our connection with God. What's going on inside of us, not around us. Carolyn says, our last comment here, I am reminded to be very careful who you follow. Yes, follow those who follow God. I learned a lesson years ago. A man of God veered off the path of life and took those who listened with him. Yeah, uh, he took those who listened with him. The Holy Spirit will put a check in our spirit and save our souls from much heartache. God spoke to me that I am responsible who I follow. Does it line up with God's word? Pray and follow Jesus. And I think you nailed it there in the end, Carolyn, for sure. Um, we are absolutely responsible. And just because this is why I say submission, coming under the mission, is, is a willing choice. Because true submission, you can leave actually at any time. It, this isn't a force. You said you'd be here and there's no guilt. There's no shame. Now, we should always be whoever we're following. We should be still having a, our own personal relationship with Jesus and with his word. And so if what people are teaching, leading, if it's not lining up with the word of God, that doesn't necessarily mean we just run for the hills. But it does mean we need to, we need to study the word of God ourselves. And go, no, this is the word of God. And sometimes we can have conversations with those people that are leading us and go, help me. I don't see this in scripture. Can you help me see where you're saying this? Because this contradicts this and help me understand. And at the end of the day, maybe you won't agree and you just have to go, well, I am convicted in my heart that scripture is saying this and I'm going to obey God to the best of my ability with what I know from scripture and what I'm learning and willing to learn from others. I think that's a great, great wrap up there, Carolyn. Um, that's it for today, guys. That is Bible Read Along. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you, nope, tomorrow we're taking a break because it is Remembrance Day. So we will not be doing Bible Read Along tomorrow, but we will be back on Friday. And uh, God bless you guys. Thanks again so much for being here. If you're enjoying this, don't wait till I'm dead to share it out. Um, go ahead and hit that share. <laughs> I don't want to be dead and then people discover Bible read along. I want to do this while I'm alive. So, um, yeah, hit that share, tell a friend, invite a friend, family member. God bless you. That's it for today. Mm -hmm.